So moving moving backwards just a second to this red pill movement, and I don't think there's a specific definition of the red pill movement. People use it just to mean like, oh, your eyes have opened since you used to support establishment Republicans to, you know, all the way on the other end of the spectrum, we have, you know, the Andrew Tates. What do you think that the red pill bro movement gets wrong? Putting this religious awakening that I think they're getting right, some of them are getting right. What do you think they get wrong about the issues of um, marriage and I guess divorce and family and what we would call the the traditional like nuclear family unit. Sure, it, it's tricky as you point out, Liz, because it's just a meme from the Matrix. You know, yeah. it, it, it's used to mean so many different things. And at its most basic level, it means exactly the same thing for the right that the, a term like woke means for the left, which is just you're waking up from a, a dream or a fantasy or an illusion, and you're coming to see reality a little bit more clearly. So at a basic level, it just means like, hey. I've discovered something that's true, and you guys haven't discovered it yet, so you, you should get with the program. So it could mean anything from someone uh, coming to a religious conversion, someone recognizing that politics is about more than, I don't know, whatever ideology was concocted in the last five minutes, that there are actually deeper springs of, of politics. Or it can mean this phenomenon that you're talking about, which is uh, guys who appear to hate women. <laughs> You know, and so I think that's a really fringe version of it. But but you do see it crop up a little bit. And in as much as there's a red pill, you know, manosphere uh, movement that discourages marriage and uh, you know encourages promiscuous sex and you know all, all all the like, then it would seem to me to be nothing but the flip side of the coin of feminism. That it's a, a, a feminism for men. Uh, but fe- feminism is wrong, not not because it's nice to women. Feminism is wrong because it misunderstands men and women. It, it misunderstands human nature. And I guess the same would be true of uh, the kind of masculinist version of that. Uh, so, uh, e- you know, even a lot of the imagery of it, I think, comes less from classical philosophy or religion and it comes more from Nietzsche, you know, and just kind of a will to power and an irrational, passionate kind of um, tyranny of the will, uh, which which we don't like. That's that's uh, uh, that, that's unreasonable and won't won't lead to human flourishing. So I, I've engaged with some of these guys, and they'll say uh, men should not get married because family courts favor women in cases of divorce. And I say it's true; family courts do favor women in cases of divorce, and probably we should uh, try to work that out. I'm all, I'm all for uh, amending the laws in that way, but I would go a step further. Whereas, whereas they buy into the liberal premise that divorce is good or even somehow a right or something and should be tolerated, I, I guess I'm a little bit more conservative or a little bit more traditional. And I think divorce is really evil. And it, you know, if, if it is to be tolerated at all, it should be in really circumscribed uh, cases. And don't forget, in America, we, we really did not tolerate divorce until the 1960s and 70s. Uh, even then, it was uh, for cause. You, usually, then you started to see in the 60s and 70s, it, it became uh, no-fault divorce, which is a contradiction in terms. If you're going to break your vows that you've made to an individual, to God, and to the political community, then someone's at fault, or maybe both of you are at fault. Uh, but but this is a really novel concept. New York did not have no fault divorce officially until 2010. Okay, so this is really recent stuff, and so I think divorce really ought to be discouraged. And I think that promiscuity, ought, uh, fornication, and adultery ought to be discouraged, including in some cases with the force of the law, as was the case in America until uh, relatively recently. I think that men ought to act like men, and women ought to act like women. I think that the state, or really we would just say the the people, you know, the, the common good has, has a, a, a care for people to have stable marriages. Marriage is a real thing that we can know about too. It involves a man and a woman, and it is for the uh, generation and the education of children, and also as a secondary matter for the mutual support of the spouses. And we can know that, and we, we ought to, in our polity, I- encourage the circumstances that will uh, enable those things and that will that will support those things. Again, I know th- there are going to be some people listening, maybe on the, the red pill right or certainly the feminists and the leftists, who who will th- look at me like I have three heads here and like I'm I'm Genghis Khan or something. What I am stating is what everybody believed just about fifty or sixty years ago. Okay, for all of American history and, and throughout the West. So. This isn't radical stuff. It's pretty moderate stuff, really. Um, I'm not saying that there's no 
cause for separation ever even between spouses. Sometimes if there's a, a real uh, violent threat or something, one might even have an obligation to protect the children oneself. But, but to, to embrace divorce and you know, radical individualism and just using people for, for your own pleasure is, is just uh, it's totally bizarre. I mean, if that's the right, then really there's no difference between the right and the left. Right. It's not only disordered, it begets the chaos that we exist in right now. And I think a lot of young men have fallen prey to the red pill manosphere because the red pill manosphere does get one thing right. They do identify that culturally, our culture is very antagonistic towards men. It's very anti-man from, you know, trying to feminize men to the Me Too movement, depriving men due process under the law to degrading men's natural duty, you know, the purpose of man to protect and provide and produce and procreate that's just completely degraded. They're, they're correct that our culture is very anti-man, but what the red pill right does incorrectly after properly identifying this cultural ill is they prescribe a poison. They prescribe everything that you just described. And maybe this goes back to the religious conversation. This is the spiritual battle. If you don't turn to God for the answers to bad things, then you're going to end up turning to bad things for the answers to other bad things. There's an irony though, because if, if the red pill right is trying to address the uh, effeminacy that has taken over the culture and the, uh, you know, attempt to turn man literally sometimes in, into women. Uh, the, the, the problem with it is that the prescriptions of the red pill right are super gay. I mean, they're, they're really <laughs> gay. Like they're, uh, I'm not, I don't even mean it just to be provocative. I mean, they partake of a gay anthropology. Uh, if, if you encourage men to look at pornography uh, they're going to be committing an act that is literally gay. They're, if you encourage men to have sterile sex uh, and all sorts of disordered sex with contraception with an endless stream of women, that's gay. That's really not different than from sodomy or anything like that. So it's, it's just, it, the irony is uh, the end that they think they're pursuing is being totally undermined by their means, by, by their prescriptions. And uh, really, it just uh, redounds to... They, well, the exact same ends that they think they're fighting against. Well, there you go. There you go. The prescription for all our political problems. 